Knuckles the Echidna first appeared in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, released all the way back in 1994, and he immediately became a fan favorite character. Sure, Sonic was fast, but a lot of Sonic characters were fast. Sonic, Tails, Metal, heck, even Eggman could break a couple ankles. But Knuckles? Knuckles could rearrange your face. Knock, knock, it's Knuckles. Knuckles was designed by Takashi Yuta after Sega held an in-house design contest to come up with a new character for Sonic 3. This wasn't anything new as a similar thing had been done with Tails, designed by Yasushi Yamaguchi, and even Sonic, designed by Naoto Oshima. It's become something of a tradition of sorts for every new mainline Sonic game to introduce a fresh new face to the series. Knuckles, of course, is known for his striking red fur, but originally he was meant to be green. Yeah, not really feeling it. He was meant to be kind of a reptilian, dinosaur-like creature even, so I suppose the green color scheme would make sense in that case. The long pointy tail is a remnant of that early design. The design of Knuckles was chosen after the developers did considerable market research on the tastes of American kids. I guess they just couldn't resist Knuckles' sick dreadlocks. As for the little swoosh on his chest, allegedly there was some sort of deal that Sega had with an undisclosed shoe company. Hmm. It's funny that Knuckles was designed to be a cool bad boy because that's what Sonic was originally designed to be, especially in comparison to Mario whose signature color, like Knuckles, was also red. Funny how things come full circle. While many of the Sonic characters featured significant design changes when Sonic Adventure came out, Knuckles is definitely one of the more subdued, only getting longer limbs and blue eyes. His Sonic Boom redesign though? Yeah, <laughs> definitely one of the more egregious. Knuckles has easily one of the best introductions of any fictional character in any form of media ever. In the intro to Sonic 3, Sonic is just minding his business. He's flying to Angel Island as Super Sonic, which is possible thanks to the power of all seven Chaos Emeralds. Just one Chaos Emerald can manipulate time and space. Sonic had all seven. Uh, just keep that in mind, okay? Now, while Sonic is in Super Sonic form, he is invincible. The only things that can hurt him are bottomless pits and being crushed. Besides that, he's an indestructible speeding bullet of doom. And you know what Knuckles does? Knock, knock, it's Knuckles. Now, I, I want all you guys to just take a second to appreciate the cold-hearted savagery that is on display right now. Knuckles punches Sonic once and instantly knocks Sonic out of his super state. And Sonic is so stunned, so flabbergasted, that he takes like 10 seconds to even realize what the heck just happened. And while Sonic is just standing there appalled, Knuckles just comes in, swipes all the Chaos Emeralds, and laughs in Sonic's face for good measure. Knuckles is from the hood, confirmed. Well, in actuality, he's from Angel Island, the mystical floating island in the sky that contains the Master Emerald, an enormously powerful emerald which Knuckles swears to protect. He comes from an ancient race of Echidnas, a powerful warrior race that began conquering other nations. Several thousand years ago, the leader of the Echidnas named <clears throat> sought to use the power of the emeralds to take over the world, but his arrogance incited the rage of the emerald's protector, Chaos, causing it to wipe out the majority of the Echidna clan. The guy's daughter managed to seal Chaos inside of the emerald along with herself, and the remaining Echidnas swore to protect the master emerald to avoid something like this from ever happening again. The aftermath of Chaos's rampage led to a period of decline for the Echidnas, eventually ending up with Knuckles being the sole surviving member of his race. Much of this backstory comes from Sonic Adventure, which would unfortunately be the last time we really got much of any information regarding Knuckles' clan or his personal backstory. Despite Knuckles being around for so many years, we know very little about his upbringing. Like, he's apparently the last Echidna, but what happened to his parents? How did the rest of the Echidnas die? I mean, I get they took a pretty fat L after the whole chaos debacle, but they were survivors. They survived for many, many years, in fact, considering the chaos incident happened 3,000 years ago. And Apparently Knuckles is only 16, so if I use my genius big brain math skills, 3000 minus 16 equals a really freaking long time. Originally, Knuckles was only 15 though, if we look at his character profile from Sonic Jam. This is really weird because in these profiles, Sonic is listed as 16, however later his age would be changed to 15, meaning Knuckles and Sonic switched ages for some reason. I guess on one hand it makes sense, Knuckles is meant to be, you know, the tougher, cooler one, so making him older, it makes sense, but it also makes him being an idiot slightly less forgivable. This profile gives us a few details on Knuckles' abilities like digging in the ground, climbing walls, and gliding, which he does by trapping air beneath his dreads. Now, listen, a fox being able to fly by contorting his butt cheeks somehow to spin his tails really fast, I can buy that. But an echidna gliding with dreadlock aerodynamics? Sorry, Sega, you're not fooling me. If we look at his weaknesses, though, girls. Sorry, Knuckles, can't relate. 
I think you're a rad guy, but you definitely you lost a couple cool points there, buddy. I'll cut him some slack though. I'll, I'll give him something, okay? His social awkwardness most likely comes from him living all alone up there on an island. I guess it must get pretty lonely being by yourself, right? Apparently Knuckles is friends with the animals on Angel Island, but I mean, have you tried having a conversation with the bird? Not as bad as a chicken, but still not very fun. Apparently the animals on Angel Island gave Knuckles a nickname. Y you want to know what that nickname is? Knuckle. Yeah, with no S, yeah. Yeah, so these animals, they're terrible friends. Uh, in a way, Knuckles is a really sad guy. The only way of living he knows is standing around aimlessly protecting some jewel on an isolated island, and for most of his entire life, he didn't even know why he was doing it. Yes, the Master Emerald is powerful and it can do a lot of harm in the wrong hands, but it's not like it's Knuckles' obligation to guard it. He wasn't the one who caused Chaos to go crazy all those years ago. It was that guy and the rest of his egotistical ancestors. Knuckles is an explorer at heart. He likes to look for treasure and find cool stuff, yet he's stuck on Angel Island, his own floating prison. In the Sonic Heroes manual, it basically implies that Knuckles is somewhat envious of Sonic's carefree, do-what-you-want attitude. Sonic doesn't have anything holding him back, while Knuckles is betrothed, that's a big word, to some duty he never wanted. We actually get a look into how Knuckles feels about his situation in his theme song from Sonic Adventure, unknown from M.E. While Knuckles' duty as the Master Emerald's protector is a lonely and thankless job, in his theme song, he's actually pretty proud of the role. He even brags about how independent he is. Unlike the rest, I'm independent since my first breath, first test, feel the right, then the worst left. In Sonic Adventure, Knuckles embraces this isolationist mindset. However, things get a little more interesting once we move on to Sonic Adventure 2. In this game, like many of the other characters, Knuckles' SA1 theme song is remixed for SA2. And in the SA2 version, Knuckles is singing a slightly different tune than he was before. In SA2, Knuckles is having some doubts. Before meeting Sonic, Tails, and all the others, he never really questioned his path in life. But after seeing more of the outside world, places like South Island, West Side Island, and Station Square, he began to question things. Talk about character development, man. I mean, imagine living your entire life believing, yeah, this is my duty. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is what gives my life meaning. Then you meet some snarky blue hedgehog and suddenly the world stops making sense. Maybe there's more to life than this. Maybe there are other ways to live. Maybe I don't have to do this. On one hand, he gets to live his own life and experience new things. But on the other hand, he's disgracing his ancestors and practically admitting that his whole life up to this point was wasted. The duality of Knuckles. Seeing as though Knuckles is more regularly hanging out with Sonic and co, it's safe to say he got over his little personal dilemma, choosing to live his own life over living the life others carved out for him. Luckily, all of the SA2 Knuckles level songs have lyrics, so we get a little more insight into how the great philosopher Knuckles the Echidna feels about the world. Apparently, he finds Rouge sexy and smooth. Uh, pretty explicit lyrics there for uh, a kid's game. In fact, if you look at the Sonic Adventure 2 Battle Box, while the game is rated E for everyone, there is a warning for mild lyrics. If you didn't know, Knuckles actually curses in this game. Shadow is iconic for his famous damn fourth chaos emerald. But we gotta show respect to the OG. Because Knuckles, he did it first. While Knuckles may not chuckle, he definitely does talk a lot. His first English voice actor in the games, and the man responsible for the iconic, oh no, was Michael McGaharn, who, I think that's how you pronounce it, who hasn't done a ton of voice work, but he was the voice for Ken in Secret Agent Barbie. When the jump from SA1 to SA2 happened, McGaharn was replaced by Scott Dreer. Dreer in his first outing as Knuckles sounded very, well, disinterested. Hey guys, long time no see. I must have got lost in the mines. Looking for the Master Emerald pieces was tougher than I thought it would be. I believe Knuckles was actually one of Dreer's first roles, so perhaps it was an experience thing, or it could have been a voice direction thing. While he sounds a bit disinterested, he's definitely the coolest sounding of any of the Knuckles voice actors. Dreer gives off an older brother vibe. He's really calm and super chill 
Well, at least most of the time. What? A ghost? After Dreer, Knuckles would start to sound more like the cliched big dumb tough guy. Knuckles was never the sharpest tool in the shed, but I figured it was more because of his naivete and how genuine he is as opposed to just being a pea brain Neanderthal. The next VA to take up the mantle of Knuckles would be Dan Green, who has done a ton of voice work, his most memorable role probably being the voice of Yugi in Yu-Gi-Oh. The control surface flow is balanced by the inverse kinetics of the- STOP! I get it, okay? It just floats and that's good enough for me. I grew up with this voice the most, so Dan Green is always gonna be Knuckles to me. Following Dan Green in 2010, Travis Willingham became the new VA for Knuckles. Willingham is an absolute beast who's done everything from Roy Mustang and Full Metal Alchemist, Guile in Street Fighter, Jugo and Naruto Cell in Dragon Ball Z, but I'm sure a ton of you probably know him for his appearances as a member of the Dungeons and Dragons web show, Critical Role. While Willingham isn't my favorite Knuckles VA, he's certainly a solid one. Thanks for the help. Not that I needed it, but it's good to have my sanctuary back. Willingham would voice Knuckles for a long time, longer than any other VA when he finally was replaced in 2019 by Dave Mitchell, a super prolific voice actor who continues to voice him to this day. It's still really early and we haven't had many games to even hear how Mitchell sounds as Knuckles, so I can't fully give my thoughts, but so far he's been alright. Every day I find something new and fascinating here. For example, here's a special new rock I just found. Look what it can do! Ugh! Well. I guess I should mention three other guys who technically did voice Knuckles in the games. Rapper Hunted P, who did the rap vocals for Knuckles in Sonic Adventure 2, Marlon Saunders, the vocalist for both versions of Unknown for Me, and he's also done work on other Sonic Team games, those being Burning Rangers, where he sung the ending song, and Christmas Nights Into Dreams, where he also sung the ending song. Finally, there's Dread Fox, the rapper for the SA1 version of Unknown for Me, the guy who gave us the signature line. You can call me Knuckles. Unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I rather flex my muscles. Dread Fox was actually the voice actor for Parappa the Rapper. It's crazy how many connections there are across multiple different game franchises. I should definitely talk about that series one day. Knuckles is a remarkably cool character, and I just wanted to make this video to show some appreciation for the porcupine who definitely doesn't chuckle. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, there's a whole playlist of videos just like this one on the left side of the screen. If you want to be notified when I post a new video, then click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you'd be so kind, click the like button too before you go, as it really helps the channel grow. Thanks guys, stay knuckled up, and have a good one.